Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather here, and the river continues through 116, and then there's a definite end to this, but it will have been an incredible 10 to 15 day run, on the, which is is just unbelievable, um, the duration of this atmospheric river. So there's really two more big surges yet to come that will affect the west. And that's really where the best snow totals are going to be. Uh, California, Pacific Northwest, Sun Valley, up towards the Tetons, Big Sky, the Wasatch, Brian Head, the western slope of Colorado. Even northern New Mexico will get some snow out of this. So we'll look at all that. The Sierra snow levels, you know the routine. They're going to be high again on 1.9. Then they'll start to gradually fall down again, but then they may return to those high levels, 113, 14, 15, with that final AR push that comes through. And I'll show you the jet with this. There's a, it's a significantly different by the time we get to 117. Um, so let me take you to, um, so this is water vapor satellite. Oranges and reds represent drier air aloft. So you can see what we have remaining with the Pineapple Express. Uh, flow in the Pacific. Two or three different low pressures riding that thing. There's one hitting the west coast right now and then the two behind it will mark the end of the entrainment of this moisture that moves into the west. Um, let me show you what the jet looks like on 117. Totally different. Um, you know for so long the last 10 to 15 days we've been dealing with a very neat west to east powerful jet very consolidated. That's not the case on 117. It's split uh, with the northern southern uh, contribution and you're in the interior west what you're seeing right there is really the the fallout the uh, behind the final storm system that moves through it's it's pretty quiet um, this almost looks more El Nino than La Nina it's pretty fascinating um, let me take you back though I want to show you what this is going to look like as a future uh, as a forecast radar and satellite okay here we go on 19 big boy hitting the west coast throws snow into the interior, still hitting on 110, and then it rolls through the interior states. Here comes the next storm on 113, 14, 15. You can see it's trying to hit the west coast. There's the end of the day on 113. Pretty quiet in the interior, just kind of waiting on this thing to hit. Um, but it's going to be there. It's probably going to take another day before it moves in and out of California and then into the interior through 116. But let me show you that one more time. Monday at 6. Here's Tuesday at 6 a.m. Here's Wednesday at 6 a.m. Here comes Thursday at 6 a.m. And here is Friday in the morning. And here's Friday night, 1.13 at 11 p.m. All right, let's talk about snow totals out of this thing. Do it in two different phases. Um, so here's 1.8 all of today through 1.10. Um, California, obviously the biggest beneficiary. Uh, because what you're dealing with is the end of a storm that's happening now and then the next one that comes in 19110 with 30 to 80 inches potentially. Incredible. And, and I still worry about catastrophic valley flooding in California. I mean, this has just been like a fire hose over the last 10 to 15 days in the same areas. But that's, that's really something. Keep in mind, um, Tahoe, some of those snow levels those high snow levels of 7,000 feet with the best snow above that will cut down on accumulation if you're not high up. That'll cut down on those numbers. Um, in the Wasatch, I like that. I'm a little over a foot for uh, Little and Big Cottonwood Canyons and up towards Park City you'll get a fair amount. Uh, about a foot up in the Tetons and Sun Valley does very well. Um, in Colorado, pretty light stuff, mainly western slope. This is not the big period for Colorado. Again, this is just through 110. Um, here is the second period, 111 through 117. Now, this captures a couple of important things. Um, still snowing hard in California um, because you've got the end of the 110 storm and then the next one that comes in 13, 14, 15. And you'll have all of that moisture sliding through the interior. That's why those numbers are so big. You're looking at really the combination of two different waves. So a couple of feet for the Wasatch and um, maybe a couple of feet towards Brian Head. One to two feet up in the Tetons. Big Sky also included does well. About a foot or so up in the Pacific Northwest. In Colorado, the western slope is where the biggest totals are going to be with this type of AR, western southwest type flow. Um, one to two feet there. Less snow as you go east of Vail, less in Summit County and up towards the tunnel and over the uh, the Front Range High Peaks. Just they don't do that. They don't do as well when you get this type of AR flow. Um, but I like what I'm seeing there. Those are really nice numbers through that entire period. So a lot yet to look forward to before this thing comes to an end. 
Um, here is the northeast. Now this is 1.9 through 1.17. There is a storm system that has snow over to rain, then back to snow, like 1.13, 1.14, somewhere in there. So that's what I'm seeing here. I'm a little optimistic with these numbers, but we'll see if it happens. If the track shifts to the north, then you're going to get less snow because it flushes the area with warmer air cutting down on the totals. But nonetheless, at least we're looking at something here for the northeast. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in here. Always appreciate it and take care.